Get on the mic, cause you know you eat jello. Okay, okay, once again, you are tuned in to the Panic Attack. This is PanicVision.com. That is my brother, DJ Maestro. I go by the name of DJ Chaos. Panic Vision is the movement. Check us out on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you join the group page, like the, the fan page. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. Now, go check out the website every single day, PanicVision.com. All new videos all the time. You know what I'm saying? The latest in entertainment, music, sports, you name it, we got it. PanicVision.com. Now, big shout out to the entire home team. Big shout out to my man Johnny Storm. Make sure you go to the website and check out his mixtape. It is available on PanicVision.com. His brand new video for I Shine is also available on the website. Make sure you check it out. You know what I'm saying? Download it for free right now on PanicVision.com. The best of Johnny Storm mixed by yours truly, DJ Maestro, DJ Chaos, The Panic Attack. So, having said all of that, today is a very special edition of The Panic Attack. You know what I'm saying? Joining us all the way from L.A., my man Max Albert representing the Albert Mason Group. You know what I'm saying? My man hails from Carlsbad, California, near San Diego. He lives in L.A. right now, directing music videos, short films, commercials, and more. You know what I'm saying? He's 24 years old, but that don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? He's already achieved a whole lot in the game, and the Panic Attack has the pleasure of speaking with him today, getting to know him a little bit better. Now, before we get into that maestro, I just want to check out a real short video highlighting some of Max's work. You know what I'm saying? So, um, let's get into that real quick. see him in your picture right now welcome to the panic attack on panicvision.com it's a pleasure to have you on the show yo thanks for having me guys no doubt so um your publicist alexis reached out to us maybe about a week and a half ago you know what i'm saying and uh she basically started politicking on your behalf <laughs> um and uh, she didn't have to go too far really before um we realized that you know, you're somebody that we wanted to talk to on the show, you know what I'm saying, and give you an opportunity to let people know where it's at, what you're doing, you know what I'm saying, and uh, where you're headed, basically. Yeah, no, no, I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. I, uh, you know, obviously, thanks for having me on Panic Vision. Love your guys' website. You guys got some good content on there. Um, just like the whole layout, the style and everything's real cool. I you know, like street street style, you know, street brand style. I like it. All right, true. We appreciate that. Why don't we just get into it? I, you know, we got a lot of questions that we want to ask. You know what I'm saying? Um, I said a little bit about what, what, what I know about where you're from and where you're at right now and some of the work that you've done. But 
How did you get started in the whole film game? How did you get started in video editing and all that? Oh man, a uh, long time ago, bro. Like, like 12, probably like 11. I got my first video camera, and you know, like it was like Adobe Premiere and like you know these like Sony Vegas programs and kind of this stuff that um, that that I don't use anymore. <laughs> but I, that was what we started on, and you know, we just kind of kept doing it my whole life. I never really thought about doing anything else. I kind of just rolled from high school into college into film school and then from film school just into working and that was pretty much kind of my transition. Was there this one moment where you realized that this is what you wanted to do and there was nothing else? I'm just not really good at anything else. <laughs> Mainly, <laughs> you stick to what you're good at, I guess. And, uh, you know, it's something that I kind of is, had excelled in from when I was young, but in terms of like inspiration, bro, I mean, it, every, every time, you know, I turn on a TV, you know, there, you, there's a lot of people in the industry that that get real like upset about everything and like bitter about it. They're like, oh, I, I hate that show. It's garbage or that movie was horrible. There was this one scene where blah, blah, blah. But it's like, dude, like so much time and effort you're put into these projects just to see it even even there on the screen, up there in, in, in front of people. and. It's amazing to me. It still blows my mind every day. Can you remember yeah. back to, to the first video you ever worked on? Do you remember what that was? I grew up doing like action sports, so it was probably like a skate video. A skateboard? Probably, probably the first one. Okay, you skateboard. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm into skating, snowboarding. I grew up riding dirt bikes and, and wakeboarding primarily. So when did you start to switch gears and take the whole professional route? Uh, well, I went to film school. And I'm not gonna lie, like when I was when I was getting done with film school, I was a little kind of burnt out. I've been doing it for so long and at such a young age and like expectations were so ridiculous. I just kind of like, I didn't really do much for a while for like two years after I was done with film school. I didn't really film anything or cut anything together. And then um, uh, I was approached by my business partner, Carlos Mason through a mutual friend. And you know, from that point, um, you know, I was just like, dude, like, if I'm going to work with somebody, this is the dude to work with. And, you know, we have the same vision, you know, we like the same movies, same projects. So we just kind of started working together. I think 2000, the end of 2008, we got together and it's been nonstop. And what does he do exactly? Does he do the same thing that you do? He does, Carlos, he helps me produce, um, but he's primarily a director of photography. Okay. Um, so he's like doing all the camera stuff, the shot lists, uh, lighting schemes. Um, all that type of stuff. Okay, cool. So you said you went to film school out in L.A. Uh, where did I you did. go to school at? Uh, I went to L.A. Film School. Okay, big shout out to the whole Full Sail family. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, okay, for Ma sure. Maestro's a Full Sail alumni. Okay, you know what I'm saying? okay. And uh, L.A. Film School is one of, the, one of their sister schools. So salute Absolutely. the whole Full Sail movement, everybody out of the L.A. Film School. Um you know that's definitely a big school. You know they, they do it right, so yeah, you, you, you definitely left left there with some knowledge to do what you're doing now, and it shows it shows in the work that you're doing. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. So so in the, in the time that you've turned professional and started working with 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 um, they said Albert Mason, right? Yeah. Um. What what who have you had the chance to work with so far in the industry? So like I I mean obviously I've been doing it a long time, but like really like doing it to like pay my bills for like two and a half years i would say two years um and the first video we did was with stun man who was in the pack and i did a video it was black and white it was called 22 and we didn't have a budget for it and we were just i just wanted to get a video done and you know i kind of met up with stun us through some mutual friends um grizzly a uh, hip-hop music producer um out of la and um yeah, man, I've, I've done like four videos with Stunna since then. Haven't worked with them in a while, but um, you know, definitely, it definitely kind of helped me get started and kind of build up my my resume and reel. Where where did you take it from there? Like, who have you been working with um, most recently? Well, most recently, I just I just did a video for Bobby Brackens. It actually drops tomorrow. It's called Ski Mask, and uh, it's off his new album. And um, got a chance to like collaborate with him and just. You know what I mean? Basically come up with the concept over dinner and then, you know, we were shooting it. Uh, I think that was Thursday and then on Sunday we shot it. And it's really my favorite, favorite video we've done so far. For people that don't know who Bobby Brackens is, uh, definitely YouTube him. You'll find he got a song on there with Ray J called 143 with about 3 million views. 
So, you know, if you've never heard of Robbie Brackens, um, he's definitely doing things in the, in the game. Who else have you had a chance to uh, work with in the industry? I know two more names, so if you don't bring them up, I'm going to ask you about them. <laughs> well, I was with uh, I was with, with Glasses Malone not too long ago. Okay. Um, shooting a movie with him in, in Watts and South Central and... Pretty much everywhere in the hood in LA. Um, what, what glasses Malone? Was it a, a movie or a video? It was a movie. It was this movie called uh, the, the Division. It's actually written by Malcolm Mays, a uh, great writer, and um, basically came up with this concept, sort of a exaggerated version of, uh, I guess, Glasses' life and kind of career and kind of where he's at right now. But definitely exaggerated a little bit. But it's it's cool though. It's a uh, you know, we, we shot it on the new red camera and um, had a great crew and, you know, had a bunch of music video uh, people, crew members working on it, lighting and everything. So it was good. It was a lot of fun. Is that Glasses Malone uh, movie in any way related to, to Cash Money? I know that from the press releases I've seen coming from Cash Money, they claim to be associated with it. And I know that uh, G had some help getting it put together from that. I'm not exactly sure all the details and how that was all worked out, but... Um, I know I know Birdman's name is is on the executive producer list, you know, Brian Williams. So shout out to him. Okay, that's what's up. So when when can we see the division? When does it come out? You know, you know, I think they were talking about first of the year. Um, and that seems pretty realistic at this point. Okay, so January twenty twelve, be on the lookout. Yep. Uh, the division. Uh, you directed, you filmed, directed? I, I, I directed. My, my business partner, Carlos, he was director of photography, so he shot the whole thing. Okay, that's um, what's up. Yeah, we had some great guys. Uh, David Bauza, he lit uh, Deuces, uh, the Colin Tilly video. He he's lit, lit quite a few big, big projects, and so it was nice to have him on the film. Okay, that's what's up. So we'll be on the lookout January 2012, The Division featuring um, Glasses Malone. And then, um, are you able to talk about your most most recent project right now? Uh, are you talking about CNN? Yeah, Alexis. Yeah, yeah, Alexis. Sure. Alexis put me onto that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's cool. Um, so I had a chance um, last week on Monday to actually go to, to Larry King's home and, and do an hour special with him, and basically sat down with him uninterrupted for. 57 minutes and asked him a whole bunch of crazy questions that I've never really heard. I mean, I watch Larry King live on CNN. I, that was my the only real news show. I watched. So growing up and everything, seeing him, you know, my dad's from Brooklyn. So he always watches Larry King. And it was just cool on a personal level just to be in his house. And, you know, I had I had a bagel with him. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we talked a little bit about what we were going to do for the show and, and had breakfast and then we went in and filmed it and he was a real cool dude. So you literally broke bread with Larry King. I literally, I did. I literally, I had a, I had a, he owns a bagel shop called Brooklyn Bagel Shop in LA. What was the, the interview about? Like, is just his life? Yeah, I mean, obviously I don't want to, I don't want to leak too much about it, but definitely, you know, like, um, it's really crazy. It seems like every important event in history that's happened since like the beginning of the 60s, Larry has been there or he's been a part of it or he's reported on it or he's just like this wealth of information. So, um, you know, like he was, t there's a story about Martin Luther King Jr. in there. That's an amazing story. Um, all sorts of stuff about Frank Sinatra and the movie industry. And he's just a really fascinating guy. He really is. Can you share something with us real quick that most people don't know about the film and video game, like the industry? You have to stay, at least for me as a director, I have to stay kind of in this creative space, you know? And, you know, when people ruff ruffle your feathers and, you know, they're talking trash or whatever, which will happen to anybody who's doing well, it, it, it can throw you off. So I think, you know, in the past, I'd say three months, once we really started kind of ramping up these projects and doing bigger stuff, I think that's been the hardest thing is just, trying to worry about our team, you know what I mean, Carlos and you know, the group of guys we have and just focusing on that and, and, and how awesome it is. But like I said, I'm a big fan of television and movies and radio and everything. I listen to, I listen to all sorts of radio and satellite and you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of just media in general. I think it's important. So it, it basically the love for the game is what keeps you moving. The love for the game. I mean, you, you, you ultimately you gotta love what you're doing. You know what I mean? I think if you love what you're doing, It'll get you through, uh, you know, the 12-hour the, the work days. So. That's what's up, so...